Hello, my name is Tim Birch, and this is the company meant for the weekly workout series, Modal Madness. Uh, we'll be talking about modes and really exploring uh, the context in which that they're used. And we'll get started with a little history on modes um, in the introduction here. Um, modes' origins date back to the ancient Greeks and uh, were the basis of European art music for over a thousand years. Uh, in modern times, modes have found themselves into all genres of music from folk to jazz to rock to blues to funk and um, and beyond as well as into uh, the styles of many guitarists from Jerry Garcia to Santana and countless others. Um, in this month's weekly workout series we'll explore the major scale seven modes the Ionian, the Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian as well as talk about uh, their distinctive sounds and how they can be harnessed in both melodic and harmonic contexts. All right, let's get started with week one. Uh, example one will really uh, illustrate and demonstrate what the modes are in structure. I like to think of modes as scales within scales. Um, you know, you have all these modes have the same notes as the C major scale, so they all exist within the C major two octave scale. Um, Ionian will be one through eight, C through C. Uh, Dorian will be two through nine, that will be D through D. Uh, Phrygian will be three through uh, ten, and um, they'll be E through E. F through F will be Lydian, and um, they'll be 4 through 11. 5 through 12 will be Mixolydian, that's G through G. Aeolian will be A through A, and that's going to be uh, 6 through 13. Um, 7 through 14 will be Locrian, and that will be B through B. Okay, they each have their own distinctive sounds. Um, Ionian, you could think of as a major scale, just is just a plain basic major scale. Um, Dorian is a minorish sounding scale and it's often associated with like a jazz sound. Uh, Phrygian is more of a Latin sound, it's from the three. Um, Lydian, I like to think of as a neutral sound, not really resolved. Uh, Mixolydian is more of a bluesy sound. Uh, Aeolian is just your natural minor scale, okay, so nothing uh, new there. Locrian is much more of like a diminished, um, diminished tension type of sounding scale. All right, and uh, then you're back to Ionian again. Um, so really, uh, in relation to the harmonic progression, the major modes would be Ionian, Lydian, Mixolydian, and uh, the minor modes would be Dorian, Phrygian, and Aeolian, and Locrian is his own things, the seven. Okay, so let's get started with example number one. Week number one, example number one. All of the modes within the key of C major, beginning with C Ionian. <laughs> D Dorian, E Phrygian, F Lydian, G Mix Lydian, A Aeolian, B Locrian, C Ionian, let's get started with example number two. Example number two takes each of the modes and starts them from a G tonic and this will give you a better sense of um, how the modes are altered if you're in you know comparing them directly to a major scale. This is how they're oftentimes presented in learning materials, um, it's how I learn the modes and there's a, a lot of uh, rules to kind of think about and, and so, but I would encourage you to memorize these. Um, the Ionian is just one through eight. You don't have to worry about anything there. Um, so the G Ionian, you just play one through eight. Um, uh, in comparison to a G major scale, Ionian is major, right? Um, G Dorian, you're gonna flat the three, you're gonna flat the seven. Um, Phrygian, you're gonna flat the two, the three, the six and the seven. Um, Lydian, you're just gonna raise the four. Uh, Mixolydian, you're going to flat the 7. Um, Aeolian, you're going to flat the 3, the 6, and the 7. Um, Locrian has a lot going on. You're going to actually flat the 2, the 3, the 5, the 6, and the 7. Okay, and this again is in comparison to just a regular major scale. Um, and uh, what really creates the modes um, within the scale itself, uh, the major scale, would be the sequence of distances and how if you're starting on each consecutive note going up the scale, 
obviously um, the the regular format of a major scale, which would be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, um, two octaves of that, you're actually beginning at a different place within within that each time, right, with the modes. So, you know, Ionian, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, Dorian, um, whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole, Phrygian, half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, and so on. So, um, we're creating these different interval combinations just by beginning on a different note each time, okay? So, let's get started with that. Example number two, all of the modes with a G tonic, G Ionian. G Dorian. G Phrygian. G Lydian. G Mixolydian. G Aeolian. G Locrian. So before we move on to week number two, um, just a few things to kind of keep in mind. Um, I would memorize, definitely memorize the formula in relation to um, a major scale of each of the modes, you know, what notes are altered really to create those sounds. And definitely try to put a, um, a label or a type of an association of the sound with the modes. Um, also try creating the modes in different keys, um, playing them on your guitar, you might have to write them out, that would be, uh, visual is a good way to learn them as well. Um, and so I think that would be kind of a good place to start. You can also hit a drone, hit an, a note like maybe your low E open on your guitar and uh, play um, a C major scale. And what that's going to do, your ear is going to um, kind of gravitate to the E, which is the third note. That's the low E that you'd be hitting as a drone. And it'll give you a Phrygian sound. So context, right, low E. Okay, so if I play C major scale, third note of the C major scale is an E. So if I hit that, that kind of a thing, okay? So this will let you uh, be able to hear the modes in context and um, definitely try them in different keys and try to start identifying modes. There's a lot of sources online as well for melodies and uh, things like that that you can kind of find, all right? All right, week number three. We're gonna explore modes within melodies in this uh, week's lesson here. And uh, we'll get started with a passage from Scarborough Fair, an uh, English folk song. Uh, it's just a small passage, it's in the key of A minor, so no sharps or flats. Um, however, in major number seven, you'll see that there is a, um, it's an F sharp, it's a raised six, and that creates a specific uh, Dorian and A Dorian kind of sound, okay? And um, I would encourage you to play this example. I'm going to play, play it for you um, in this next example here. But also play it and um, make that an F natural and see what happens. You know, make it all just natural. And you'll really see how uh, the flavor is kind of gone from the melody or the unique kind of tension that's in there from the Dorian note. Okay, so let's get started. Week two, example three, Scarborough Fair. Alright, let's move on to example number four. This is Old Joe Clark, and it's an American folk song. Um, and what you'll notice is that the key signature is for A major, right? Um, however, uh, this, in this passage that we'll analyze, um, every other major, you know, in the odd majors, they're going to actually have a G natural, okay? That's going to be the flat seven of A major, so that's going to create an A mixolydian sound just in those odd majors, okay? And um, I would encourage you to play this on your own, again, as in the previous example, and um, try playing a G sharp where there's a, a G natural and you really hear a huge difference. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be an A mixolydian at that point, but you'd be able to kind of hear how that mode, um, how that alteration in the scale really kind of enhances the melody and creates some tension within. Okay, let's get started. 
Example number four, Old Joe Clark. All right, in closing in week number two with Modes and Melodies, um, uh, I think it would probably be great to take some time to get accustomed to some of uh, other songs that actually utilize modes. Um, the Beatles have a lot of great songs, um, passages within their music. Norwegian Wood has a mixed Lydian feel. Um, some of the, the phrasing that's involved, Eleanor Rigby's and Dorian. Um, Jefferson Airplane, White Rabbit, that's a Phrygian. Um, Leonard Bernstein Maria is a Lydian. And so take some time to explore some of uh, the music that you're already listening to and try to identify the sounds that you're hearing um, within, within the songs. Another uh, great thing to do would be to try to create melodies from each individual mode. And uh, if you're going to do something like maybe a D Dorian, actually start on the tonic, start on the D. Um, if you're going to do an F Lydian, start on the F. And uh, create melodies and those will directly reflect the melody itself, you're starting on the tonic, so it's really going to establish that uh, sequence of distances and, and create a, um, a relevant melodic, you know, modal sound. All right, week number three, uh, we're going to talk about modes and harmony. And uh, before you get started with this lesson, it may be a good idea to review um, how the harmonic progression works in the major key, um, how the major one chord has uh, an uppercase Roman numeral, the minor two chord. Uh, has a lowercase and such. So the major chords um, will have uh, uppercase Roman numerals, the 1, the 4, and the 5. The minors will be the 2, the 3, and the 6. Those will have lowercase Roman numerals. And the 7 will be diminished, okay? And which is a lowercase with a small circle next to it, which it would indicate diminished. And uh, this will help you to kind of keep track with everything. Um, so let's get started with uh, example number 5A. And so what we have here is uh, the C Ionian, and what we're going to do is stack thirds and uh, just do the triads, um, each one of them beginning from the one, the two, and the three, and so on uh, in the key of C major. Okay, so let's get started with that. Here is example 5A. Week three, example 5A diatonic triads in C Ionian. The next example, example 5B, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about the diatonic triads in the key of um, D Dorian. Okay, it's the two of C major. And so we would actually refer to this key as the key of D Dorian. Um, so that being said, the D is the one, okay? Um, sure, we know that D Dorian exists as the two in C major, but we're actually specifically talking about D Dorian that implies that the tonic is D, and uh, the chords are going to reflect this. So um, as we play through the chords, we stack the thirds, do the same uh, process that we did in the key of C major, um, in C Ionian, we'll end up with um, the same chords, same triads, but this will be in the key of D Dorian. Um, we'll end up with a, a D minor, an E minor, an F major, a G major, an A minor, a B diminished, a C major, and then back to a D minor again, okay? Um, so let's get started with that. Example 5B, diatonic triads in D Dorian. So uh, the next example, example 6A, uh, it's a diatonic triads in the key of G Dorian, okay? Um, Dorian, we know, is the two. It's the two of F major, okay? So the key signature for this um, would be the B flat, okay, of, of F. Um, however, we're talking again about a specific key, the key of G Dorian, so it's important to refer to that as the tonic one, which would be a lowercase Roman numeral, you know, starting um, from a minor chord, okay? So let's get started with this. Uh, next example, example 6A, and uh, diatonic triads in the key of G Dorian. Example 6A, diatonic triads in G Dorian.
Example 6b, diatonic triads in G Mixolydian. All right, so uh, as we stack these thirds and we create these triads, we know that G Mixolydian, yeah, it's, it's the five of C major, um, but it's its own key as well. So these are triads, so there's no sevens involved, but if you were to, um, to add the sevens, this one chord would be a dominant seven chord. Uh, because G7 is the 5 of C major, right? So, um, but it's his own key, key of G mixolydian. Um, here we go with example number 6b. Example 6b, diatonic triads in G mixolydian. <laughs> Let's move on to example 7a, and this is a uh, basic chord progression in E Dorian. Okay, we have an uh, E minor one chord, we have a G major three chord, uh, an A major four, and a D major seven. Okay, these all exist in the key of E Dorian, and uh, eventually you'll be able to kind of start identifying um, songs that exist within modes by their chord progressions as well. So this is a great example um, of an E Dorian. Okay, we'll get started with that. Example 7a an E Dorian chord progression. Time for example 7b. Uh, this is a chord progression in the key of E Phrygian. Okay, and again, uh, we spoke of this before. Um, e Phrygian, uh, although it exists in the key of C major, we would refer to as its own key. Okay, so uh, the one chord would be E, would be a lowercase Roman numeral one. Um, F major would be an uppercase Roman numeral two. G major, um, which would be the uh, the major three chord in your uppercase Roman, uh, Roman numeral three. A minor um, will be a minor four chord. And so eventually we'll be able to kind of identify again by looking at chord progression what mode uh, that a passage or the song might uh, be in just by the interval distances and the qualities of the chords themselves. Okay, so let's get started with example 7b. Example 7b, E Phrygian chord progression. <laughs> In closing with uh, week number three, um, a few things to keep in mind are that uh, modes exist obviously within kind of a parent scale, again scale within scale thing, um, except for we're talking about chords, right, chord progression, so they exist within the harmonic progression might be a good way to, to maybe um, speak of that. Um, so you know if you want to uh, explore this further it might be a good idea to look at um, taking some some specific modes, ones that you like, and creating the chords within the modes and try composing some chord progressions within those modes. Um, and it might be a good idea to also start on the tonic. So if, uh, for example, if I want to do maybe a, I don't know, a D Dorian um, chord progression, I, I definitely want to start on the D Dorian chord. Although this isn't necessity, it does reinforce again the kind of modal uh, quality of the chord progression and, and gets our ear in the right place. Um, yeah, so on to week number four. Week four, before we get started with example number eight, I think it's a good idea to make light of the fact that thus far in the previous lessons we've really dealt with modes as they reflect uh, in the major scale. Um, in fact, modes exist in all scales, uh, melodic minor, harmonic minor, and any exotic scales that you might encounter. I think it's a great idea to put this all into practice by uh, picking your specific favorite scale that you have and create modal chord progressions within the scale itself. Uh, record those chord progressions and improvise with the appropriate mode that goes with the tonality there. Um, it's a great way to explore the scale, the, the tonality in both uh, melodic and harmonic uh, value and um, it's just a great way to kind of uh, get a sense of how these unique tensions exist within um, different scales as well. All right, well, on to example number eight, and uh, this is a 12 major etude with three specific modal modulations. Um, in uh, the in measures one through four, 
although the key signatures suggest B minor, we're really in B Phrygian, and uh, I would look for that C natural note as it creates a strong Phrygian feel. Um, in majors 5 through 8, we're in E Dorian, and key signature might suggest G major, but there's an uh, additional C sharp note in there. Um, and it, in majors 9 through 12, we're really in B mixolydian, and you can see this uh, exhibited in the chord progression itself, uh, specifically in the chords and the melody. And uh, one thing to take note of before we get on to example number eight is that um, every time there's a modal modulation, I've made sure to engineer this example with uh, the tonic of each new mode as it's uh, presented. And so make note of that. That's not a necessity or a general rule that you have to kind of follow, but it does create a great foundation sonically for your ear to grab onto the new mode as it comes upon us, okay? So let's get started with example eight. Here we go. Example eight. <laughs> Alright, in closing, I think it's probably uh, important to, um, to bring to light that you know, these, these lessons have really pertain to the major scale. Uh, modes exist within all your scales, um, melodic minor, uh, harmonic minor, and a lot of exotic scales as well. And so I would encourage you to explore modes within any scales that you might encounter. Create uh, chord progressions by stacking the thirds of these scales. and. Uh, utilize the technology that we have um, in today's world by recording chord progressions that you've created and improvising over the, over the top of them with specific scales. Um, uh, one great example might be to, um, again, starting on the tonic of each um, chord as you, as you go through, create some vamps, just some really easy two chord vamps, um, maybe a G minor 7 uh, chord and then a C7 chord, okay? And, as they're happening, these, this is the 2 and the 5 of F major, okay? Well, the G minor 7 chord could also be considered G Dorian, right? It could be its, one of its own self, and then the C7 could be C Mixolydian. Uh, again, these notes are all uh, present in the key of F major, but what I would do is uh, when you play G minor 7 chord, start on the G and uh, play G Dorian, and when the C7 chord comes around, play a C mixolydian, and you're going to effectively create harmony within your melodic plane and be able to reflect that. Um, over time, uh, modes and, and the way that uh, modes have been harmonized have definitely evolved uh, in, in our modern music, and in jazz specifically. Um, in 1950s jazz, uh, chord progressions, Miles Davis, George Russell, um, a lot of other composers uh, really utilized this jazz modal style. Um, pianist uh, McCoy Tyner used fourths and stacked fourths instead of thirds um, within modes. Um, so you may want to uh, to look at this and take it to the next level, the example, um, which I will uh, I'll play for you in a minute here, um, really consists of a, a D Dorian mode um, but stacked with fourths and this will create some otherworldly, um, real unique chord progression um, kinds of sounds that you can use and sub in place of, of the triads that would exist in uh, a D Dorian. Okay, so um, I will give you a quick example with that. Here we go. Taking it to the next level. Taking it to the next level, stacking fourths in D Dorian. <laughs> I'm Tim Birch. Thanks again for tuning in to Acoustic Guitar Magazine's weekly workout series accompaniment video for Modal Madness. And may all your explorations be fruitful. <laughs>